Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. Every day, Fairwinds Energy Education receives many questions. One of the questions we've been asked lately is about the radiation leaking from Fukushima Daiichi's triple meltdown into the Pacific Ocean. People want to know if they should move away from the West Coast and the Pacific Ocean. Others are even suggesting that they should move as far away as South America. At Fairwinds Energy Education, we've spoken to other scientists we respect, radiation chemists, environmental engineers, and ocean biologists. And we all agree that while the contamination of the Pacific Ocean is serious, it's not as dire as some bloggers are urging you to believe. So today, I'd like to talk to you about radiation and the risk of exposure to radiation. According to the National Academy of Sciences Beer 7 report, Biological Effects of Ionizing Radiation, and contrary to what the nuclear industry would like you to believe, all radiation is harmful. The math is quite simple. The more radiation you receive, the bigger the risk. The less radiation you receive, the smaller the risk. This function of radiation exposure is called the linear no-threshold theory. The National Academy of Sciences has determined that there is no threshold below which there's no radiation risk. And scientists around the world agree that there is no threshold. However, many scientists also believe that radiation effects are actually worse at low levels than the Beer 7 report predicts. And we at Fairwind support that analysis. In December 2012, radiological biologist Ian Farley wrote an excellent article detailing the discrepancies in dose assessment at these low levels of radiation. You can see our website at Fairwinds for links to his external report. We all live in a world that's become a world of risks. Leaving the Pacific Basin to move elsewhere might actually increase your overall risk for exposure to some other toxin. You could, for example, move to Louisiana with its increased risk of cancer due to all the chemical plants or to a city that might have a higher incidence of theft or mugging. Or maybe you might drive to another location and risk an accident on the long trip. Many people have written to us about planning to move to Australia, which is currently beset with wildfires and toxic uranium mining. Or South America, where people have been surprised to learn that there's also nuclear power plants. The important thing to remember is that right now, there is no risk-free place on Earth to live. Years ago, when I worked in the nuclear industry, I took radiation readings near a nuclear plant on the Atlantic Ocean. I took one set of readings when the plant was running and the other when the plant was shut down. To my surprise, the radiation readings were higher when the plant was shut down. Why was that? The readings I took during the shutdown were at low tide, and the naturally occurring radioactivity in the rocks that were on the edge of the ocean was uncovered. At high tide, the ocean shielded the radioactivity in the rocks. It made it appear that the nuclear plant was giving off less radiation. Many people have written asking about the recently released YouTube video discussing the radiation risk on a beach south of San Francisco. The video shows higher radiations on the beach than inland. Radiation readings vary, and there's no supporting data to compare the current radiation levels on that beach to those before the meltdown of Fukushima Daiichi. Some scientists have gone so far as to take samples of the sand on the beach, and according to safecast.org, one of the people is the owner of the company that manufactures the inspector radiation detector used in the YouTube video. According to the SafeCast report, that beach has only naturally occurring thorium and not naturally occurring radium. No cesium from Fukushima Daiichi was detected. From the data observed and collected by others, it appears likely that the normal variability in radiation readings is due to different rock formations along the beach and whether or not it was high tide or low tide. Thanks to safecast.org for their ongoing scientific work. The point I'm trying to make 
is that the variability of radiation on the California beach is likely normal. Years ago, before many of us knew the dangers, the Pacific Ocean was contaminated by atomic bomb testing. And now it's being contaminated by water leaking from Fukushima Daiichi. Is the ocean safe? If I lived on the Pacific coast, I would feel free to swim in the Pacific Ocean and run along the beach on a foggy morning. The amount of man-made radiation is currently quite low. But I do remain concerned about eating fish caught in the Pacific Ocean because the government is not releasing data about bioaccumulation of radioactivity in the Pacific Ocean fish until there's a fully transparent radiation database on fish. Eating them is a risk I personally have chosen to avoid. We live in a world of risk. Unfortunately, the Earth is now full of man-made toxins, and the radiation from Fukushima Daiichi triple meltdown is just one of them. Radiation knows no borders, and radiation knows no boundaries. And for the most part, we don't even know when we've been exposed. In this new year, we all need to speak up and work together to stop the worldwide proliferation of toxic chemicals and of nuclear waste. I'm Arnie Gunderson. I'll keep you informed.